Hi, my name is Elias, and I will be presenting our paper Open Space Sonification Complementing Visualization of the Solar System with Sound. What you're seeing right now is the space visualization software OpenSpace. With this software, a user can explore the known universe and specifically our solar system, which we are approaching right now. OpenSpace is commonly used in dome theaters and planetariums, where a presenter narrates the visuals of the software in front of an audience, similarly to what I'm doing now. Background music is often added, which is used to immerse the audience and evoke a sense of wonder, but it usually does not relate to the information presented visually or add any additional insight. We thought this was a missed opportunity, since sound through sonification can be used to support the visualization by providing additional insight to the audience. By also making the sonification immersive, we can preserve the effect that the background music would have. By using the advantages that sound has over our visual perception, such as higher sensitivity to temporal changes, the directionality of sound, and our ability to distinguish between several sounds, we can create a more diverse way of conveying information. With this outlook, we set our aim to develop a sonification that would complement open space in a planetarium environment. There are a couple of studies who have explored the use of sonification in planetariums, which were used as an inspiration for our own work. We, for example, experienced that Tomlinson et al. created straightforward and separate mappings, while Quinton et al. created one continuous sonification containing several mappings for each planet. Specifically, we intended to explore the design space between these two studies to create both an informative and immersive sonification. To begin the design process, we decided on conveying the data of these planetary properties, which was based on interviews conducted by related work and through our own experimentation. We then mapped these properties to sonification parameters, basing our decisions yet again on related work and our ex own experimentation as well as on common mappings in the field. The sonification was developed using SuperCollider, and by using open sound control, we could obtain positional and temporal information from open space and integrate it with the sonification. We have now arrived at our solar system and also to our first preset view, which we fittingly call the solar system view. This works as an overview, both visually and audibly, where the first three sonification in the lists can be heard, which I will now describe and demonstrate. So the sonification of mass is conveyed through the pitch of the fundamental sound of the planet, such that a bigger planet has a lower pitch and a smaller planet has a higher pitch. The planets were placed in a three octave range, where the outer planets are placed in the lowest octave because of their larger size, and the inner planets are placed in the higher octave considering their smaller size. This creates a gap of almost one octave between the inner and outer planets, which represents the differences in size between these types of planets. The length of day is conveyed together uh, with the sonification of mass by modulating it. In the solar system view, this is performed through an amplitude modulation, where the planet is audible when a fixed position on the planet appears on the day side of the planet. The time speed for open space is set to 24 hours per second, which is synced with the sonification. This, for example, causes Earth to rotate once every second. Let's listen to the solar system view sonifications. Spatial positioning is used to convey the length of year and also to separate between the planets. But since we can't easily transmit surround sound in an online environment, we have decided to only use stereo in this demonstration. For more detailed information about the planets, we have the planetary view, which displays the full range of sonifications. We also have a compare functionality, where we combine the sonifications of the planetary view with the view of the solar system to easily compare two planets. This is what we will be using now to demonstrate the sonifications of the planetary view. By using the graphical user interface of OpenSpace, we can select which planets and what sonifications we want to listen to. 
First, let's listen to the sonification of mass and length of day, but now through the planetary view, where the sonification of length of day has a more continuous sound. For these demonstrations, we will start with Earth as a reference, and then listen to another planet to hear how the sonification changes based on this data. So we'll start with Earth. And next is Jupiter, which has both the largest mass and the shortest length of day of the planets. Next, we have the sonification of gravity, which is represented as an auditory icon of a bouncing ball, where a planet with a weaker gravitational force will cause the ball to have a longer air time and more time between the bounces, compared to a planet with a stronger gravitational force, where the ball will be more attracted to the ground, causing a shorter time between the bounces. So now you'll hear Earth. And next is Mars, which has a weaker gravity compared to Earth. Temperature is conveyed with a noise impulse generator, which resembles the sound of a frying pan, where a higher temperature increases the intensity of the sizzling. The temperature change of a planet was conveyed by sweeping through the temperature interval of the planet in sync with its length of day such that the lowest temperature is audible during the nighttime for a fixed position on the planet and the highest temperature is audible during the daytime. So we start by listening to Earth. And next is Venus, which has the highest temperature in the solar system and also has no temperature change. Lastly, atmospheric pressure and average wind speed were conveyed with a synthesized wind sound, where the thickness of the atmosphere was conveyed through the amount of low frequency content of the wind, and the average wind speed was conveyed through the amount of fluctuation of the wind sound. So first we'll listen to Earth. And next we'll hear Mars, which has a thinner atmosphere and lower wind speeds compared to Earth. And finally we have Venus, which instead has a thicker atmosphere and higher wind speeds compared to Earth. It is also possible to listen to several sonifications at the same time, which we'll now listen to with Earth. To investigate the quality of the mappings, we first conducted two online surveys where the feedback was used to improve the sonification. A final evaluation was then conducted in a dome theater where a total of 30 people participated. Our evaluation method of choice was the bus questionnaire, which contains 11 statements about the different aspects of an auditory display. Here we can see a selection of the results from the evaluation. According to the results from the bus questionnaire, the sonification was improved for each iteration and overall the participants rated the sonification quite highly, and especially so for the dome evaluation. When looking at the rating for each sonification and for the dome evaluation, there is a possible trend where a less pleasant sound was more understandable and a more pleasant sound was harder to understand. This could indicate that there is a potential trade-off between how pleasant and understandable a sonification is perceived. Thank you for listening to this presentation, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Elias. Um, I'm going to echo what's been said in the chat. Uh, excellent sonification examples. Um, very clear. Um, just to get the discussion started in the Q&A. Um, I was hoping for a more 
uh, elaborate comment from you about the uh, pleasantness versus, versus preferable sounds for sonification, the point that you made last on your questioner. Could you share some more information with us? Yeah, well, when we developed the sonifications, there was no intent of creating this, this uh, separation of a pleasant or an interesting sound, because that was something we found afterwards. But there, there are also some sonifications that are inherently supposed to be unpleasant. For example, the temperature sonification, uh, when you heard Venus, for example, it's in a way supposed to sound unpleasant, like you don't want to be on that planet. Um, so yeah, th there is this trade-off uh, between how pleasant and how understandable the sound is, but it doesn't necessarily have to be bad uh, all of the time. And uh, but yeah, it's it stated in the paper that that is something to to think about in in future studies. Thank you. Um, there is a question about um, merging music into the sonifications. How did you discuss merging the music with the sonifications? Uh, that wasn't really done. I guess just in this video, we had some background music for effect and to also mask the, the noise of the microphone a little. Uh, but else, the, the, there's no really merging with the music. It's supposed to be separate, at least for this sonification that, for example, a presenter would talk and then you would listen to the planets, uh, basically. Uh, so no, we didn't consider merging it with music. And well, some sonifications were more musical than others, and that also relates to this uh, pleasantness versus understandable. So that's true for your evaluation also. There was no music. That was just for the presentation here. It was just no, yeah. your sonifications. Yeah, just oh, the okay. sonifications. Um, there is a follow-up question regarding how many planets did you present con uh, concurrently during the evaluations? Yeah, so the amount of planets that was tested through this solar system view. So the first sound we heard where you have these simpler sounds, which enables you to play more planets. Uh, so there we had a similar case here where we used the inner planets and Jupiter. So then that would be five planets that we conveyed at the same time. And then at the same side, then we have for a single planet, we listen to all of the sonifications uh, of a single planet at once. Yeah, and we had some questions related to that, like how well did you think the sounds fitted together and so on, but we didn't do a deeper evaluation on if you could actually distinguish each sonification and absorb all the information at the same time. Um, there's a question from Jordan uh, regarding the kind of uh, accompanying explanation that the participants received during the evaluation. Was it as elaborate as the one that we were given during the presentation? Yeah, it was very similar actually with also slides in the planetarium uh, stating the different information of the sonification and then also telling what the properties of the planets were. Because uh, well, we could have structured a sonification in different ways. We could have said nothing and then they would kind of guess what the sonification meant. But our approach was to give all of the information and then they would rate how well they thought the sonification conveyed this change between the planets. Great. Since we have a little bit more time, um, regarding the concurrent sonifications, did you run into a masking situation at some point? If something that you were sonified carried less information than something else, that it wouldn't be perceived, it would be masked by a different sonification? Did you have any effects like that? Did you notice? Yeah, well, the different sonification had different sound designs. So for example, the length of day would sound all the time and temperature as well together with length of day. But then you have this gravity sound, which just sounds every fourth rotation of the planet um, to hopefully uh, be able to separate them better. And then we also had the spatial uh, separation in the planetarium, which we couldn't convey here uh, as well. But then you would hear one planet, it could have been behind you and then another one in front of you and so on. 